This is a lecture for my AMP2 students and it's a continuation of the immune system. With this lecture, we're going to talk about the acquired or specific or adaptive immune system. Okay, the two properties that distinguish the acquired immune response from the natural resistance are specificity and memory. And um, when we think of this particular part of the immune system, um, there are two major branches. So we have cell-mediated immunity and antibody-mediated immunity. That's quite a mouthful. Now the antibody-mediated immunity, there's an older term for that and that's called humoral immunity. Um, but we're gonna call it antibody-mediated immunity. All right, so we're going to be talking about this acquired immune response. And it occurs both in cell-mediated immunity and antibody-mediated. And there are three major processes that go on. It's activation, differentiation, and proliferation. And I'm going to give you a little bit about each of these. Now, we're not gonna go into full detail about how all of this happens. We're, I'm basically giving you the overview so that you can understand the big picture, which is acquired immunity. So we're gonna first start off with activation. So activation, we're talking about activation of the T cells or B cells. And this process of activation is kind of like triggering these cells to do something. Um, and remember, one of the, one of the uh, properties is specificity. So becoming very specific. And these are gonna become very specific to the antigen. So it's either going to be a free antigen that's in our body or it's going to be an antigen that's presented to the T cell or B cell from the antigen presenting cells. And we talked a little bit about those antigen presenting cells. Um, but overall activation, the T cells or B cells need to see that antigen, right? They need to be presented with that antigen. All right, so differentiation. Differentiation occurs after activation and this is when the T cell or the B cell changes into different types of cells. So I'm trying not to use differentiates in the definition. So they will change into different cells. The T cell will, will separate into very specific cells. The B cell will separate into very specific B cells. And some of these we call effector cells. Effector cells are cells that immediately have a job. They immediately have a job and they go to work on that antigen. They go to work on that infection. All right, and we're gonna talk more about those. I'm gonna get more into detail about those. But after differentiation, then those cells experience proliferation. So prolifer to proliferate means to make more, make more. So once they differentiate into their separate types of cells, then they start dividing. They divide very quickly. They proliferate. We're going to make lots of them. So each specific type of lymphocyte is going to start dividing, and we're going to have many copies of them, um, kind of like making a little army of um, those immune cells ready to fight that infection. Now, focusing just on the cell-mediated immunity, now, the T cell has already been activated. It, it knows what the antigen looks like, okay? And now it's going to differentiate. So let's talk about T cell differentiation. And T cells will differentiate into three major types. And that is the cytotoxic T cell, the helper T cell, and the memory T cell. Now, if you go on to take immunology, you're gonna learn about some other types of differentiated T cells that get a little bit more specific, um, but these are the three big ones, okay? And three major ones. And so the cytotoxic T cells, let's start with that one first. Now, just looking at the word cyto, cyto means cell, toxic, that's not good, right? And so what cytotoxic T cells um, they are actually involved in active killing of that pathogen. Um, they will have a cell surface marker called a CD8. A CD, all in capitals, stands for uh, cluster of differentiation. And that means that the proteins on the surface of that cell are becoming very specialized, right? 
they will be able to bind to the antigen and they're very specialized for a cytotoxic T cell. Okay, the next type is called a helper T cell. And helper T cells, what they do is they, their job is to release cytokines. Now we have talked a little bit about cytokines before, um, and cytokines are molecules that are produced by immune cells that really act on other types of immune cells. And cytokines, um, what they do are overall, the helper T cells, is that they are going to help activate other um, lymphocytes, so other T cells and B cells. Now, helper T cells have a cell surface marker called a CD4. Now, sometimes that helper T cells are referred to as CD4 cells because of that. Now, memory T cells. Memory T cells, um, memory T cells don't really have a job during that first infection. Um, they are made, they are made with antigen, they're made with uh, cell surface markers that will bind to the antigen, recognize and bind to the antigen. Um, but they're really more important on any type of subsequent infection. So they're just kind of, they were made, we're glad they were made, and they're going to stick around in the body. These cells are usually long lived. They will, you, we like them to live the rest of our lives, um, but we tend to see that they, they will stick around for about 10 years, 20 years, maybe even, um, even longer. So memory, T cell, memory cells in general do not have a job during that first infection, but we want them made because they will be the ones that are gonna stick around after that initial infection. The cytotoxic T cells and helper, helper T cells, once that infection has been cleared, those cells will die, okay? They're on a mission and once that mission is completed, they will die. Memory cells stick around, right? They're gonna stick around for hopefully, fingers crossed, a lifetime or a very long time. Okay, now on to B cell differentiation. So B cells, let's say they've already been activated and that kicked off um, a domino effect there in the B cell. Now the B cell will differentiate. The B cell, once it's activated, differentiates into two types. It will differentiate into plasma cells and memory B cells. So first let's talk about the plasma cells. The plasma cells are going to secrete very specific or uh, specialized antibodies that can bind to the antigen. Um, they're gonna do that because they have very specific receptors. Uh, so plasma cells secrete the antibodies. Now antibodies do not directly kill antigens. They don't directly kill pathogens. Antibodies do not do that. What they do is that they will bind to an antigen or pathogen and they will kind of mark it for death. They, they tag it for death um, or destruction by other types of immune cells. And when you have antigen that binds to pathogens, that pathogen usually cannot exert its negative effects on our cells. So antibodies are good. We hear a lot about antibodies here lately in the, in the news. Um, now antibodies. Antibodies, if we look over on the left side of the uh, screen, I have a picture of an antibody. It kind of looks like a Y shape. And that is kind of the fundamental structure of an antibody. So anytime that you see uh, a st structure like that, it's referred to as an antibody. Antibodies are proteins. And um, that's just what the structure looks like. Now there is going to be a, a part on that molecule that is going to bind to the antigen, okay? And um, there are other types of antigens that we're talk, uh, sorry, other types of antibodies that we will talk about in just a minute. Okay, the other type of cell that the B cell differentiates into is a memory B cell. Now memory B cells, memory T cells, um, they don't have necessarily a job um, during that first infection. We want them made. And they have the ability to recognize and bind to antigen or pathogens in the future. And we want them to be long-lived. And this other picture that kind of has a red background that I have on the uh, PowerPoint, that is showing a virus, okay? And you see the protein spikes on the virus. Uh, they're in kind of orange. 
And then those uh, those lighter colored structures are, are that's supposed to represent some antibody. So you have lots of antibody that can actually bind to a pathogen. Taking a closer look at antibodies, the more proper term for antibodies is immunoglobulins. So that's a mouthful. And um, there are five classes of immunoglobulins or antibodies. Now that, that traditional Y shape for that protein, um, they're all, all of the classes are built around that, that base shape, that base shape of a Y. And um, you'll see by the picture that I have up that um, each class kind of looks a little bit different. Um, and some of them are, are much larger than the others. So um, on the classes, we usually refer to those as IG. So the IG stands for immunoglobulin, and then the class is the capital letter. So IgG, A, M, E, and D. And um, so that's just kind of give you a uh, kind of a, a broader look at these immunoglobulins, these antibodies. Um, what else can I tell you? Uh, our lovely COVID um, virus, um, when we will, when, when you are infected with it naturally, <clears throat> or you get the vaccine, um, it is the IgG that is stimulated. And that's pretty typical of lots of pathogens. We'll see that IgG, and it's just a particular type of IgG that is um, created. Um, unfortunately, when you are when you are infected naturally with the COVID virus, um, the SARS-CoV-2, what happens is that the memory cells don't stick around very long. And that's pretty typical of um, most coronaviruses the, in that group. Uh, but the vaccine, however, will confer immunity for a much longer period. Um, so those memory cells will, will stick around. So there's the concepts of primary and secondary immune responses. And I want to distinguish between those two. So primary, um, your primary immune response is going to be occurring during your first exposure to that pathogen. So what all is going on inside of your body with those cells? Well, once it gets past the first and second lines of defense, um, then you have the macrophages and the antigen presenting cells that are going to process and present those antigens. Then we'll go through those three processes that we talked about. The cells will go through those processes. So it will be at, go through activation. They'll go through um, differentiation and then proliferation to a point where that there's enough cells to help fight off that infection. And remember, they're also ma making memory cells, so memory T cells and memory B cells. Now, the cytotoxic T cell, the helper T cell, the plasma cells, those are all effector cells, okay? So all of those are out there trying to fight that infection, albeit in slightly different ways, but they work together in order to uh, clear that infection from your body. No effector cells, none of those three that I said, or the antibodies that are created from the plasma cells are going to be available during that first exposure uh, for several days and even up to two weeks. Okay, so you could feel very bad for a long time. You'll have lots of signs and symptoms from that, that first exposure from that um, infection. Okay, the secondary immune response, that is going to occur on any subsequent exposure to that pathogen. So that can be your second, third, fourth, and on down the line. Um, for, your second, for the secondary immune response to kick in, you already have your memory cells. So you're gonna have memory T cells, memory B cells. And once that pathogen gets in, antigen presenting cells can process and present that antigen, um, or those memory cells can even bind that pathogen because it has the antigen right away. 
So the secondary immune response happens much faster. As it turns out in the secondary uh, immune response, activation of the T cells and B cells are not ne is not necessary uh, because of the memory cells. The memory cells are there. They already have the protein on their surface that will bind to that antigen. That's very specific to that antigen on the pathogen. So once it binds to those memory cells, then they automatically differentiate and then proliferate. There's no activation in secondary immune response. We don't have to wait all that time for that to happen. So almost right away, we have effector cells, the cytotoxic T cells, the helper T cells, and the plasma cells that will secrete antibodies circulating in our body almost right away, relatively. And well, they're gonna be created within hours anyway. Now this is a much faster response. It's a much faster response and it's a much stronger response. The secondary immune response is, right? Faster and stronger than the primary. It is so fast and strong that you could be exposed to that pathogen and never even know it, okay? It could have gotten through first and second lines of defense, let's say, and been picked up by your memory cells they differentiate, they proliferate, they're out on patrol, they clear that infection, they clear that pathogen, and you have no signs or symptoms. You don't even know you've been exposed to it. That is glorious, right? We love our memory cells just for that. Now you know the difference between primary and secondary immune responses. Um, let's talk a little bit about vaccines. So just vaccines in general. Um, I know that there's lots of different types of vaccines and they all work a little bit differently, but just vaccines in general. Um, what they do, what they attempt to do is to stimulate the primary immune response, okay? So you're introducing an antigen. You're introducing that particular very specific antigen into the body. Then antigen presenting cells, then they're going to present them to T cells and B cells. They're gonna go through activation differentiation and then proliferation. And because of that differentiation, you're going to make the memory cells. All right, and the effector cells. Now, because it's a vaccine, the effector cells are kind of like they made them and we made thousands of them and now they're out on patrol and they really don't see anything uh, while they're out on patrol. Okay, they don't last very long, which is pretty typical of effector cells, but we still have our memory cells. We have our memory cells that are long lived. We want them to stick around for a very long period of time. So what the goal of vaccines is, is to stimulate the primary immune response. Okay, and that's what's gonna give us those memory cells. Then if you are exposed to that pathogen that has that very specific antigen sometime in the future, then what happens is you get your secondary immune response. Remember, I said secondary immune response is, happens much faster and it's stronger. Um, so if you're exposed to it, you probably don't even know you've been exposed to it because you have no signs and symptoms of it. And the immune cells clear it from your body very quickly. All right, so this is the end of our, um, our lecture on acquired or specific um, immunity, and um, I will see you in class.